you were saying about, you know, really taking things away and moving a little slower to move fast and all that. But did you ever wake up fast? What happens to your day? Your yeah. day, when you wake up fast, your day falls apart. When you wake up slow, your day goes slow. If, if it's going fast, it goes slow because you're going slow. Yeah. Because you, you got control of your day before your day got control of you. Hello, everybody. June 8th, thank you for joining us for Cap and Gown. I'm Rachel Phillips Buck, uh, VP for Student Success for First Resources. I'm joined by Mr. Anthony Melcury. Hello, sir. You're tall. I am tall. So, you guys, Anthony and I got to meet in person this last week because I took a trip to New York and he was surprised that I was 5'11. Because yes. when I'm sitting here, you don't know how tall I am. <laughs> right. I was more surprised at how short I felt. <laughs> oh, I, dated, I dated a girl who's 5'11. She asked me out. She was a tall, beautiful girl. She asked yeah. me out in senior in high school and she broke my heart. And one of the, one of the things when we got in a little argument after she broke my heart, she goes, well, all my friends told me I shouldn't date a short guy. I was like, oh. That's okay. terrible. Yeah, but I, I uh, one day I'll tell, I, I got complete revenge. Okay, well, she doesn't sound kind, so I'm not sad for you to get <laughs> complete revenge. I don't, I don't like that attitude at all. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us. We have a pretty um, interesting but also short session today, Anthony, because when I tell you what the theme is, you're going to be like, I don't know about that. I don't, I'm not sure that's a great idea. So we are talking today about waiting. So in Kintsugi, there's this place where we take a breath and we take a break and we wait. And um, you and I are not particularly built for patience and waiting. And so we are going to work on it today. Do you know what my favorite saying is among all my favorite sayings? What? Go slow so you can go fast. Yes. And that is the foundation of this idea, right? Like, hey, let's be smart so that when it's time we can, we can go super fast. So hey, I'm very, that. believe it or not, I am very patient. That's why I'm a good poker player. But, um, oh. but when I go, I go like the other day yeah. I was doing some, um, I was talking to this, these people I may be working with um, on, a, on a project. And uh, I actually called the next day and said, I'm so sorry um, that I was out of my mind last night. Cause I was completely at hundred miles an hour. And, uh, and she was, no, you're fine. You were fine. I said, no, I was out of my mind. So I go fast, but I can also go slow. Yeah. It's a really important characteristic. Okay. So let's do first our pictures. Um, here's the picture. Oh, here's how you can get connected to us. Taplink.cc backslash various resources. So here's a picture of you. Yes. When was this and what's happening? Okay. Oh, that's a good question. I was, um, posing at the United States Air Force, Whiteman Air Force Base, I was selected and approved to join the Thunderbirds. Oh. Now, not as a pilot, because I'm not a pilot, but as a protocol officer. So, you know, the Thunderbirds, the Air Force Thunderbirds, mm -hmm. I do all those, you know, uh, shows. Um, I was selected to travel the world with the Thunderbirds. So that was my picture um, to present. And at the same time, I was um, interviewing for protocol assistant at the White House. And so wow. that picture was for both of those things. And in order for me to do either one of those things, because I was selected out of a lot of people, um, I had to re-up for four years. And as much as I love the Air Force, I decided the last minute, I don't think I want to do another four years because I, I, I had my sets, uh, my sights set on taking over the world in the hotel business and how to get started. Yeah. You can't dilly dally if that's the goal. So that's <laughs> good. That's good. Um, what? So did you, where did you do your boot camp? Um, where all Air Force uh, members do their boot camp, San Antonio, very hot, Texas. Oh, that's where my in-laws are from. Oh, okay. Very hot. So probably back then it was kind of a smaller town. It's gotten crazy these days. Um, all I remember was getting yelled at and can't wait to call my girlfriend. That's all oh, I remember. Dear. <laughs> okay. Well, I did come to New York this weekend. I took this picture with Rachel Elam on Staten the Island Ferry. Ferry. 
Yes, yeah. it was lovely. Well, actually, when we went out to Staten Island, there was a thunderstorm and we thought we were going to die. But then when we came back, it was really beautiful and we got to see. Your um, tours are so uh, dramatic. I, <laughs> thunderstorm. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> well, it was iffy. I said to Rachel, surely they're used to, you know, to drive the boat in the yeah, thunderstorm. We're used to weather in New York. We're used they're to used weather. to it. Yeah. Not Texas. Texas has a little bit of snow and it shuts down. Yeah. It's cold and we shut down. We're like, we're out. <laughs> um, so we did, my daughter and I came, we did a lot of really fun things. You told us to do the High Line, which was delightful. We oh. went to the um, Museum of Natural History. We stopped off. Anthony, I was so sad about Grand Central Station because I all the time say in my family, like, it's like Grand Central Station. So I said to my daughter, we have to go. So you understand like all the busyness and all the movement when I oh. say that. And then we went and it was, there was nobody there. So I was like, well, first of all, I know we only have 40 minutes, but I, I'll be remiss if I didn't tell you, you have the most intelligent, beautiful nine-year-old <laughs> daughter I have ever met in my life. Well, thank you. She was so happy to Next be Next time, you don't have to come up, come come to breakfast. Me and her can just talk. I'll just out. send her with you. Yeah, you guys can. Have, maybe next time I can't do the show, I'll just have her stand in and she can. Uh, there's that. two things. On the Grand Central Station, did, when you looked up, did you realize just 10 years ago, you couldn't see that? Oh, is that true? Yeah, it was full of... Um, smoke and and just all kinds of yucky stuff oh, wow. if you look at it if you put that picture back up if you look at it there's a spot all the way in the corner it's maybe this big it is very dark that's what the entire ceiling looked like let's see if you got it wow no i don't see it but that's what the entire ceiling it was it was literally black you thought the the, the ceiling was black it took them a couple of years to do it oh my gosh well it yeah. is so beautiful it has the um like, what is that? The astrolo uh, astrological signs on the top yes. painted in gold. Yes. It was really, I, I got pretty moved walking into that building. It is just such a breathtaking. And now, now, if you take the time to put up the picture that you and I took at breakfast, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm in big trouble because <laughs> I came back and everyone's like, let's see your pictures. And then I'm like, right between this picture and this picture, that's when I had breakfast with Anthony. Sorry. <laughs> so I didn't, we, I guess we'll have to do it again. Yes. Um, I did take the though to cats, which oh. we had pastrami and pickles and liverwurst and it was delicious. Did she have the pastrami like I, I told her? To she did. She had cream soda and pastrami, just like you said. And did she did she really enjoy it? She loved it. Yeah. She it was delicious. We had a great time. Okay, so let's do 20 questions. Okay. Uh, except you. I have 19. All right. What is your favorite holiday? Um Easter. Oh. How many people do you text in a day? 26. Wow. Okay. Um, did you have a major in college? Business. Okay. In what setting are you most comfortable? Sitting by myself in a corner. Yeah, me too. Okay. Sweet or unsweet tea? Sweet and unsweet, depending on the day of the week and the mood. Okay. What thing do you look forward to every day? Sitting in a corner by myself. <laughs> Me too. And kissing um, my daughter's good night or, or good morning. That's good. Okay. Last night I was sitting in the chair. My daughter actually came over the chair and put her hands out and put them on my head and kissed my head. I was like, that's the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> and my 22 year old daughter I should have. That's yeah. That's precious. Are there any extreme sports you'd like to try? I've done most of them. Um, uh, race car driving, but I've done that. Um, no, I've done it. I got it all out of my system when it comes to speed. Okay. Um, what is your favorite thing to spend money on? My kids. Okay. Um, I just bought my, my daughter a very nice pair of shoes because she's staying on her feet all day. And um, if I show my wife how much I spent, she'll stab me in the neck. Don't show her. I won't. Don't, don't tell her. Okay. What do you think about when you're trying to fall asleep? Um, what do I think about when I, I, I gratefulness, there's how grateful I am and that I'm able to sleep in a warm bed. Yeah. Mac or windows. Oh, when, uh, Mac. Do you have more of a sweet tooth or do you like salty foods? Oh, sweet. Uh, what's the first thing you look forward to when you wake up in the morning? Brushing my teeth. Uh, what food will you absolutely not eat? Um, I won't eat anything on a bone. Uh, do you prefer a night out or a night in? Mostly in, but 
you know, like everyone, I like nights out, but most yeah. of them. What's your favorite meal of the day? Um, my two o'clock, because I fast to two, so I'd say my two o'clock shake, which I just actually had. Had. All right. What is your Starbucks order? I don't uh, order from Starbucks. I usually get food from Starbucks. I don't drink coffee or tea. Okay. What is your favorite app on your phone? Um, Poker Atlas. Showed me where all the tournaments are. Okay. Uh, and what is the best and worst ice cream flavor? Hmm. Wow. That should be an easy one. Um, there are none. There are no worst. There are no bad ice cream flavors. You know, Matt really loves ice cream. When I asked him that question, the only thing he could think of was peppermint. He said he loves chocolate, mint chocolate chip, but he doesn't love peppermint. Yeah, I, I'm not a peppermint guy in general, but um, I, I I can't really have ice cream because I'm allergic. I'm not lactose. I just I just can't have it. But um, I have this thing that's not milk, but it's um it's really good ice cream. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not, it's not dairy and it's, it's, oh my God, it's so good. I can't what do you eat. order? What's the flavor? I, I just get it at a supermarket. It's, um, it's just chocolate covered with vanilla. It's really good. Yeah. That sounds really good. All right. Well, thank you for playing with me. I always learn something new. Well, thank you. Um, okay. I want to do state of the union really quickly. And then actually, Anthony, I want to talk about your no vacancy show that you did today. Cause it was precious and I love oh. it. God, was that crazy? It was great. So let me do State of the Union. First of all, you guys, I've been keeping you up to date on what's happening with schools requiring vaccinations May 7th. So a month ago, we were at 261 schools requiring vaccinations. Today, we're at 475. So again, I think that's just going to keep increasing as we go through on to fall. Um, there's a great article today in Inside Higher Ed about why faculty should continue to hold virtual office hours even after we're returning to in-person. And the thrust of that article is really about how it makes it more accessible for students who are not on campus, for first generation students who are more likely to show up in a Zoom meeting with their advisors than to come to their classes, um, makes it easier for students with jobs and students with disabilities. And so I was, uh, Rachel Elam and I were talking about while I was in New York, all of the sidewalk dining that has kind of popped up to help these restaurants have more space to be able to have, you know, um, more, more clients come in and make money. And I was like, you know, that's such a great example of something that didn't exist before COVID that was adapted in COVID and I think is going to stick around because it is a great idea that is really similar to this idea of being able to doing advising online because it makes it so much more accessible. And the restaurants are doing it well. Like there's a restaurant called Quality Meats that has outside dining that looks like you're inside. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And um, it really adds to the, the whole thing. Yeah, it's we did that several times and it was really delightful each time. Um, also, you guys know the news about um, diversity right now in terms of international students. So there's a lot of restrictions and visa delays. And so international students coming to study on our campuses has been reduced um, about 16%. So pretty significant, but historically, whenever we have um, epidemics like SARS or swine flu, those numbers are decreased. And then it usually takes a year or two for it to get back to where it should be. So even if you're seeing a reduction on your campus of international students, the assumption will be in the next couple of years as those restrictions are lifted and we get things worked out that they'll be able to come back. So that's good. Um, something really interesting, Anthony, I've told you that we're working on the summit initiative for first generation students trying to help them be really successful because the pandemic affected them. There's a survey out of the college board. Um, they did a survey of 10 million college students. And what they're finding is that the largest shift in student enrollment was at two year schools, so community colleges. And primarily those were students who are first generation, underrepresented minorities, low achieving students from higher poverty communities and high schools. So it's just affected those students much more than students who are going to four year private and public institutions, which tend to be white or Asian students, come from college edu educated parents and have a strong academic achievement. So we've seen a reduce in uh, a reduction in the number of students who are going to college primarily at those um, community colleges, although some of our private two and four year institutions as well. And then the last thing I have for you is the University of Nevada, Reno, Reno just partnered with Apple 
um, to uh, provide um, iPads, Bluetooth keyboards, and digital pens to all of their students. So they're talking about that in terms of closing the technology equity gap that students are saying, I don't have computers or I don't have what I need to be able to be successful. And so I love this because, you know, several years ago, schools were being really gimmicky with giving out iPads, like, hey, if you come, we'll give this to you. But they didn't have any plan for how they were going to use that, how they were going to um, implement it in the classroom. And so what the University of Nevada is saying is we're going to give you that technology, but also we have classes for you to learn how to use it really, really well. So I love that investment in um, students. I love UNLV. I've taught some classes there. I love that school. Yeah. Yeah. They're really remarkable in terms of helping their students, which takes me to your show today with Harris Rosen, um, which for those of you who don't know in the hospitality industry, he, I think you said today has the largest number. He's an independent hotelier, largest number of hotel rooms in Florida. Um, he He's independent owner of in, the most independent. Hotel rooms. He is, um, so the reason I want to talk about him now is when I'm thinking about State of the Union and I'm thinking about all of these schools trying to solve problems for their students and figure out how do we get them what they need, he is just such a remarkable example of somebody who for 40 years has run his business taking care of his employees. Um, I tried a couple times today on that show. He was so, I, I told Matt, he's sort of like Mr. Rogers. He's like very thoughtful and very um, slow, but also just seems like such a kind hearted man. Yeah, he was, uh, as I said on the show, he was on our show a couple of days before he had a furlough people. He allowed people to stay on for months, paying everything, millions and millions and millions of dollars a month. And um, the day before he had a furlough, everyone, he didn't tell me he was going to do that. But he was broken. He was broken. I, I mean, I saw. I, I got off the phone and I called Glenn and I said, "He's bro he's broken. I don't know what he's doing tomorrow or this week, but he's doing something. He's making a decision that is is breaking his heart." Yeah. So this is a man who takes care of his employees. He provides them K um, pre K classes at school for all of the the students. He provides health care. He just built a what twelve hundred dollar or sorry twelve hundred square foot uh, Rosen oh, Medical Center. Oh, sorry. Thousand to take care of his people. He has increased high school graduation of his employees' children from 50% to 100%, and he gives them scholarships to go to community colleges and trade shows. Nobody pays a penny for health insurance. Nobody pays a penny for uh, daycare. Nobody pays a penny for college. He has, the be he has his own medical facility on site. And when you talk to people that work for them, like even if they've left 10 years ago, they literally just like, Oh, Rosen. Oh my God. It's the best place I've ever worked. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, it's what you thought Disney world would be. Right. Well, his model, which is both financially successful and putting his employees at the heart of what he does, I think is, I, I, I mean, I would love to talk to him because I think that there's a lot of schools who could learn so much about what he's doing for his employees. Um, well, if you if you just um, remind me, text me tomorrow or later, and I'll, I'll, I'll have my producer get you his information. Okay, I would love that because he really is is the exact model that we're trying to teach schools yeah. not only how to take care of their students but also their employees. Which in higher but, education we don't do a great job sometimes. But like I said, what you focus on gets done, and. He focused on it and he yeah. was the one that said, this will get done. I will make less money. I will, um, but I'll have less turnover. And in the end, I will make more money because I have right. less turnover. I will, um, I will self-insure our company and yes, I'll put our, us at risk, but at the end I'll make more money. So you could, you can be generous and, and really have a family environment and in the long haul, actually save money, even though it looks like you're going to lose a lot of money. We actually, after that podcast, I actually took a page out of his book and we're doing stuff in the hotel we're about to buy in Florida. Um, and I said, we are going to be the leader in that area, even though it's a limited brand uh, kind of hotel. And um, it, getting off the phone with him really inspired me. Yeah, he's, he is quite a remarkable person. So I was so happy to see him today. Okay. So let's move to, you remember we're in this Kintsugi process, and I said today our, um, our topic is weight. 
this is coming at a really good time for our schools because we're in the summer. And so in the rhythm of the academic year, we have this bumper in higher education where our students have gone home. We're thinking about the initiatives that we're gonna do for the fall. But historically, summer has been a time of rest, um, of thinking about things that worked last year and things that we wanna do differently. And to be really honest, we missed it last year because everybody was working so hard to connect with students. And so all of the schools I'm talking to are longing for this period of waiting and resting to think through what has just happened to us. You know, what have we come out of and what are we gonna do for the fall? Um, and I don't have a Hotel Impossible today because you guys don't do a lot of waiting on Hotel Impossible. <laughs> you do a lot of like, okay, we got to get this done in a short amount of time. But I think what you said is exactly right, which is there's a lot of mental work that has to happen internally for you then to be able to go fast in your initiatives and your projects. And you cannot skip out on that because if you just show up and you're like, hey, okay, what are we talking about today? Or what are we doing today? you're not going to be set up for success, right? 100%. And, yeah. and that was, and that was Mr. Rosen. Mr. Rosen went slow so he can go fast. He really, like he, like you said, he fired his insurance companies, medical insurance company without having a plan. And he had to go very slow and he had to build it very slowly, methodically. And it, it, it all worked out. Worked out. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why he doesn't run for president. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, he has, you know, with his groups, everybody who's ever worked for him, you know that they would be totally on his side. He's, he's really precious. Okay. So one of the first things as we're talking about being in this wait stage is about removing. And I think this is really important because um, over the last 16 months, I feel like a lot of things have been added. Now we do this. Now we do this. Now we're doing this. Here's a different hat. We have to approach this in a different way. And one of the very first things to get to kind of a rest stage is to remove things that are not working, to be very intentional about saying that maybe was adaptive when I decided to do it, but it is not appropriate anymore. And so thinking through of all of the hats that you're wearing, you and I were talking about this, Anthony, in terms of like projects that you want to pursue, what are things that are not working what are things that can be done more efficiently? And also what are things that are more trouble than they're worth? I'm investing a lot of stuff in this thing. And the truth is I'm not having a lot of return. Um, it's not making my life better. It's not helping my students. There's no good reason that we're continuing to do this thing when it's not um, making anyone's life you know, better or, or uh, being helpful in any sort of way. And so I think we are always sort of adding, and this is the right time, especially in summer to say, hold on one second, what is it that we need to take away um, so that we can really invest in the things that we love and are important? And if I can add something, it's just, it's, it's more of a tangent, but you were saying about, you know, really taking things away and moving a little slower to move fast and all that, but you ever wake up fast? What happens to your day? Your yeah. day, when you wake up fast, your day falls apart. When you wake up slow, your day goes slow. If, if it's going fast, it goes slow because you're going slow. Yeah. Because you you got control of your day before your day got control of you. It's the same thing with your business, right? The way you open up the front door of a college or, or, or a cleaner, did you get there on time? Are you prepared? And then you are when you're in that state of mind and you're going slower and moving slower mentally and physically, you're seeing things that are pushing you. You're like, why am I letting that push me? I don't want to go that fast because, but if you wake up fast, you don't recognize that those things are pushing you and yeah. those things are moving. If you wake up slow, when that hits you, you're like, whoa, you're, you're going faster than I want to go. Right. And so I wake up slow, believe in that. Yeah. I like that because I think the thing is you are being mindful. When you wake up slow, you're mindful about what's going on in your brain and your body and your circumstance instead of rushing headlong into a thing and being like, oh my gosh, how did I end up here? I, don't, I wasn't paying attention, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it actually goes to the next point, which is within weight, you have to do this pause and breathe. And that is in the middle of a busy day, you have to create space to do exactly what you're saying, which is like, is a thing rushing me along or am I going at the pace that I want to go because I recognize the things that are important and the, and the way I want to move through my day. 
Um, yeah. and, and what it does is it happens to me and my team when I with like even either June before, and there's one person on my team that talks and moves slower than I do, but she's more efficient than I am. Just because somebody moves and, 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 and does things slower doesn't mean they're less efficient. A lot yeah, of times they're a lot more efficient because, and what she does amazing because she's in that kind of third gear all the time or second gear, she doesn't let you move her around. She, yeah. just doesn't allow, she doesn't allow it. Even when I'm going, where she's like, slow down. Yeah. And that is that ability to hold space. So we do that all the time in counseling where somebody's like, I want to rush through this part. And we're like, no, we're not going to rush through this. We are going to sit patiently here where we need to be mm -hmm. and be thoughtful instead of trying to avoid or trying to move through or trying to say, I'm going to shortcut that into something and, else. And because she was controlling space, um, we were dealing with, we're taking over a hotel and we're going to have eight employees in the entire 200 something room hotel when we take it over. And, and, and so typically I would be very like, oh, okay, what are you going to do? What's playing? What's playing? What's playing? And I was so cool and so calm. It was because she was holding space, as yeah. you say. That's right. You make people less anxious when you give them that space. You say like, it's going to be okay here. Um, Rosen said today on your show, when, when his last, like, here's my advice. He said, the first thing you do is take a breath. And then you have a conversation with yourself and you say, am I happy with the way things are going now? And are there things I can do to make other people's lives easier? Which I just thought was such a beautiful, like step-by-step. Step. We have to do each of those elements. It's like, hold the space, take a breath, check in with yourself. Are you doing the right things? If no, what would you like to do differently? And I feel like in the last 15 months, we've been so busy um, and we've just been trying to manage just to keep everything stable and still, and like, don't think too much about it. Cause there's not a lot of things we can control And because it's scary <laughs> and because it's scary because we don't want to, you know, be immersed in that, that we have to relearn that piece of like, no, take a breath and ask yourself how you're doing and what's going well. And what would you like to change? And it, it does make a huge difference. Yeah. And um, there's one thing I said at the end, when I said, you know, he's doing this by by going slow and holding space and doing the things that he does he's making people less anxious to your point he's making people stress. families are less stressed like saturday night they're sitting around watching a movie they don't even realize that because of mr rosen they're less stressed that five thousand like i said there's a five thousand copay on most insurances for for a lot of the hotel insurances anyway and for somebody making two hundred thousand a year okay 5,000 is still expensive, but I got it. So God forbid right. something comes up, I got five grand. But when you're going paycheck to paycheck, um, 5,000 might as well be 50,000. That's right. That's right. And so what you said to him was, you are making people less stressed. What you've invested in is helping people feel safe, helping them know like the, the job's not going to drop out from under you. You're not going to have a catastrophe that you can't pay for. Your kids are going to be taken care of. You are helping people feel less stressed and safer, which then makes them better employees, but also helps your, your ultimate business of your um, guests because they're safe. And so they can then extend that onto um, guests. And they, and they have pride and pride can't be taught. Pride, pride has got to yeah. be achieved through trust and, and long, you know, having a long record. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, the other thing in that that I thought was so interesting is this idea. So we talk about this in the higher education with RAs a lot of times where RAs are students and they have groups of students that they're helping take care of, but they also have stuff that they're stressed about. So their family is sick or they don't have enough money. And so you just can't pour from an empty cup. If you have RAs and you're not taking care of them, you can't have an expectation then they're going to pour into your students and take care of what's happening there because they're dried up. They have nothing to offer. Right. And so that idea of pouring into other people so that they can pour it down, I think is so um, important to this Critical. idea of rest. Um, okay. So what are you telling me to tell Anthony today's show is shared. So everybody is asking Anthony about your show with Mr. Rosen. So we chatted the link so that all of our um, participants can watch that. It really it was is, it's a good show. It's, it's not only really a good fun. show. It's you, you, when you're listening to him, you're like, Oh, okay. Okay. He's special. 
Yeah, he uh, is. Like, they, like Glenn called him an icon. I said, don't insult him. I, there's a lot of icons. He's a one and only. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, okay, the last thing that I have on our list is rest with patience. And I don't love this. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because it makes me kind of, I'm not very good at it. I feel like I try to be restful, but I'm not very good at doing it with patience. I'm kind of like, hey, can we hurry up and get this resting thing over so that I can move on and do other things? Do, do, do you ever like, um, you know, do breathing exercises and- like I should, but I get very impatient. Right. So- So you don't meditate? No. Yeah. Well, you know when I meditate, you know what I'm thinking about? What? When am I going to stop meditating? Right. That's what I do. I sit there the whole time and I'm like, how long do I have to do this until I can get onto something useful? Which I think means we probably should meditate more because we clearly are bad at it. Right. <laughs> I, also, I also think that people like us, maybe, and I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm making stuff up the top of my head, but we meditate by doing like right. when people say like, relax. Oh my God, you want me to get angry? Tell me to relax. It's like, I am relaxing. I was talking to my nephew and we were, I was showing him something. Oh, he's showing me something. And I'm like, okay. And then what? And, and he goes, relax. I said, what are you talking about? I'm as relaxed as can be. I'm by my pool. I'm sitting with you. And he goes, you're so intense. I was like, no, that's me relaxing. <laughs> this is, can't you tell? I'm relaxed. <laughs> Get to tell them relaxed. I think to that point, there is, I actually think there's a lot of mental work. You and I were talking about this um, at breakfast. There's a lot of mental work you do to be clear brained, to say like, I know myself, I know what I need to accomplish today. I know what is stressful. I know like these are the places where I'm not my best self. There's a lot of that work that happens before you can then do the thing that has to be done. And so I do think it's an interesting conversation to say like, I cannot sit still and meditate, but I will tell you when I'm walking, my brain settles down and I get into a place where I can be like very present with myself, but I cannot do that just sitting still. That, I, it makes me I, 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 I think most people have a very difficult, I, I will tell you the breathing exercises that the person I work out with really helps me with, gets me to the point where I'm almost asleep. And so, I'm so like, like just zoned out that I can't think because my brain shuts down because of my breathing exercise. Yeah, that's helpful. Maybe I should try it. Well, I found this quote and I thought that this would help us with patient rest, which is this idea of like okay. patience is not, it's not that your passion's gone or that you're not like still energized or intense or whatever. It's just, there's this place in rest where we say, hey, I'm going to tame that and focus on breathing, focus on what's happening with me, focus on some of these other things, because by doing that, then I can come back with even more intense passion and also like very clear passion, right? Like I've been very thoughtful and here's, and here's what I want to invest in. And, and if you don't, if you don't have patience to like in taming your passion, you break stuff. <laughs> That's me. Like if you, if you put me in a really good hotel that you just want me to maintain, um, I will die of patience because I will be patient and then I will, I will fall apart. So, uh, when I will put myself in that arena, because if I go to a good hotel, just make it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to break stuff. Yeah. Just because you can't like, it's not a maintenance thing, right? There are some people who want to maintain and there are some people who are like, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Right? I don't let's, know what, I don't know what maintenance is. I don't know what that means. <laughs> You're like I'm out. I don't know about that. Um, all right. So I do want to give you and me, Anthony, and also all of our listeners, this encouragement, this idea that we have to cultivate being playful and restful. So many times exhaustion is a status symbol and productivity is about self-worth. And if we are not taking care of the instrument and saying, I am going to be committed to rest, I am going to be committed to these quiet times when it's appropriate, to be thoughtful, it's not turn off your brain, it's just be thoughtful about um, the things that you have to do next and the things that are working and the things that you should stop doing. And that then sets you up to be much more successful um, moving forward in all of your, your projects. Yeah. Um, and like I was, you said in the beginning was reassess the goal, like reassess why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I was thinking a lot about creativity uh, and this idea that that the enemy of creativity is fear and busyness 
and that it's very hard to have creative solutions to things when you're just afraid everything is broken or you have too much work to do and you can't stop and take a minute to assess what's going on. And so um, I think for the fall, we're going to have a lot of need for creativity for all of our students and that if we are not taking this pause right now, we're not going to be able to, to rise to meet the challenge of what's going to happen in the fall. And I think it, we, we've got to um, shut up. We've got to listen. Like, like this is like, we've got to listen. Like, like Mr. Rosen listened. He saw his people struggling. Like, we got to listen. Like, like knowing what they want when they come back to college is almost like you're playing God. Like, how do you know what these right. kids want? And, 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 and everybody had their COVID moment. And, um, but the stress and fear is still probably in all of us. Absolutely. And I so, think- So asking a lot of questions of what they want. That, I think that's exactly right because you can make a lot of assumptions, but it's like you and I talked about last time, like you can have your data, but if you are not listening to what people are actually saying, you're going to miss the boat because they're not, they're not afraid to tell you. They're happy to tell you what's going on. You just have to have the right um, question and perspective. Yeah. To be able to ask those questions and get that right. So. I think you taught me. It's like asking open and like, are you okay? Don't ask that question because yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, not, yeah, it's fine. I'm fine. If you say to me, what was the moment in COVID that really scared you, whatever? And I would tell you when my next door neighbor passed away. So then you would get, get me to open up. So I think questioning and uh, uh, listening is is um, really what we have to do when people come back. Um, but if you're not in a good place and you're not quiet and you're not holding space, um, they're going to feel it. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. So this is the time for you to invest in yourself and your coworkers and your employees to make sure that when students come back, they're going to be healthy. So I have a link for you guys. Um, there's a book called Creativity Inc., which I would encourage you to read. It's about Pixar, but it really talks about this feeling or this idea that we're going to be creative as we take care of ourselves and as we have this rest and relaxation. Otherwise, we are in summer mode. So don't forget uh, forget to connect with your students, but also please take time to do things that are um, joy giving to you. I have to tell you, Anthony, I have been kind of depressed, but travel and new restaurants and food, I was like, I had so many times when I was in New York where I just was like, I feel really happy right now. Being with my friends, eating good food, seeing new things. And it's just such a great reminder of like, those are things that um, are gonna help me be better when we get back in the fall. So, and, that, and, and not taking those things for granted anymore. Yeah, that's right. Like understanding those are really, really important for us to pursue. Right. Sure. I got an elevator last night with um, this couple. And when, as I'm walking on, I go, you're vaccinated? They go, yep. I said, okay. Because they didn't have masks on. I was like, okay. I walked in um, and I was like, wow, this is the first, like this to me was the normal, like, all right, we're back. Like I can no share an elevator with somebody and they're not wearing a mask. Yeah. It is really nice to have those moments where you're like, oh, right. This is what it was like. Yeah. So, well, thank you for spending time with me. It is always a pleasure. Um, we have given you guys a lot of really great links. So please pay attention to that. Lots of ways for you to connect with us. I'm happy to be as helpful as possible. And I really would encourage you to go and listen to No Vacancy today um, with Mr. Rosen because it was uh, delightful and fine times um, to rest and to wait this summer so that we can be ready for our students when they come back. Go slow so you can go fast. Absolutely. Good to spend time with you, friend. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.